Here's a way to create um, a setup in Studio One where you can have all eight groups from Machine showing as tracks in the Arrangement View and the Console View as well. I've created a template for this um, where uh, two templates so you can um, well they're not two templates really, one's a template so you will you can open up um, Studio One with Machine ready to go with all the eight tracks in the Arrange and Console view with all your eight uh, groups across here um, each one with a kit, each one with the routing already done and because of the new plus routing uh, option you've got here in, in the latest machine uh, which is 2.6.7 I think it is um, let's just have a quick check 2.6.7, yep, the latest one um, as long as you have the routing greyed out so you don't want it with the white background there, if you have it greyed out it means every time you load a new kit into a different group it will preserve the uh, routing so that means that now creating a template where everything's ready to go uh, is possible whereas that was um, beforehand you would have to continually um, go through the routing and it does take quite a while because of the way they have all the, their kind of um, ins and outputs MIDI and audio set up in here it's not the clearest way to do it so um, this video really is to explain how to say you've got an existing project and you want to drop in an instance of machine um, and then you want to create groups and create patterns that way um, this is the way to do it so um, you will obviously have the template for this but this is the way to set it up in the first instance right so I've dragged in an instance of machine here yeah, just open this up a little bit so you can see the ins and out i just set this to machine 2, so this is channel 1. Um, I'm going to just load in a, an 808 kit, because it's kind of a standard. You can hear the sound coming there. Everything's just coming out of this stereo output here. Because everything's going to the group. So in terms of... Um, you don't really need to set up any audio for this at this point. But we will set up other channels when we uh, move between groups. So first thing I want to do, now I've got the kit in there, I want to right click on the pattern go to group MIDI batch setup and sounds to MIDI notes um, and then I want to go to the input output tab sound output MIDI and I want to click the first instrument uh, shift and click the last change the output destination to host and leave that on channel 1 then I'm going to go to sound input with all of this still selected, I'm going to MIDI, turn off MIDI through so I don't get uh, MIDI feedback. Um, and then I go to Group, Input, and activate the MIDI. And then I change the MIDI channel to 1. Uh, the root note then I'll change to C3. So that's controlling from the right note. Okay. So now, that's essentially the routing done. Okay, And that will apply to every group that you create. The only thing you have to change is the... Uh, MIDI input and output channels. Okay, so what I will do is see if I play that. I'm getting MIDI up here, and also getting MIDI down there, and I'm getting the sounds of all the instruments. And everything's just coming out of a stereo output, which is here um, in the console or the mixer view. So what I can do now is I can create all my groups. Okay, and creates these colors as well which um, you can match up later on in the tracks so that you have everything in sync so um, this is group one now what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to go to B group B and I'm going to paste now you notice now everything's added the 808 kit has copied across and um, which is fine as a default remember because I keep the routing plus root and button grey I can change this kit later on to anything else all of the inputs and outputs will stay the same but it means I've now got a different kit and the different kit will appear on another track so it's going to start to uh, be very very useful because you can move between groups you can change your kits it means you've got full control you don't have to worry about setting anything else up in, in terms of this um, so the only thing I do need to change if I go back to sound output and MIDI everything is still highlighted by the way I haven't uh, deselected that. I just want to change that to channel 2 and I want to change the group input also 
to channel two. Now if I play the pads, you'll notice I'm hearing the sound from the plug-in and I'm seeing MIDI activity here, but I'm not seeing any MIDI activity on the group. And that's because the output there is set, or the, um, the input is set to channel one. If I change that to two, now I'm getting MIDI activity. But now, of course, uh, group one will no longer work there. That's why we need separate tracks. So group one. And of course, you can move between the groups on the controller, on the hardware, moving between uh, pressing the group buttons. Okay. So uh, we're in B. I'm going to put this back to one, and I'm just going to go through and set all this up. So I'm going to copy again, and then I'm going to paste, and then I'm going to go group three. That's the input there, and the sound output is going to be three as well. Um, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy. In fact, I could just copy, I could just paste everyone here. Okay, so they're all done, uh, except that that's on three, uh, that one needs to be on four, sound output and group input. S uh, group input on five now, isn't it? That's four. It's easy to get confused with this, but um, take your time with it. Five. Uh, MIDI output is six because you can just use the drop down there to group input is six this is the painful bit but once it's done it's done you save it as a template sound output is it seven and then eight we go uh, group input eight so now if I just go through them pressing them on the uh, group buttons on the controller Group input one, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six, seven, eight. And then the sound output, let's go back to there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course, uh, all of them will be on C3, but I'll just double check. Yeah, that's not moving. So that's good. Right. But you can see that I've, uh, in the Studio One um, menu here, I've saved eight groups MIDI setup stereo routing okay I've set that up there uh, because I did some uh, stereo routing as well in the mixer um, what I'd have to do is change all of these going from master these are all the groups and I'll change them all you know external one to eight which I'll do in a, in a moment but also you can save this as a machine project um, what I'll do is go File, Save As, and then on my, I've got a Mac here, so Documents, uh, NATO Instruments, Machine 2, Projects, I set up a folder called Setup Templates with eight groups MIDI setup stereo routing, okay? I mean, uh, it's very, very useful then because you just have a file in there. Every time you open up, you know, you can open up a template when you create your song in Studio One from the um, from the start page, you can create a new song. You see that I've got a template here, which will this will mean that when you're starting the song from scratch, everything will be you know machine will be the first thing in your project, um, unless of course you set up a new template where this machine was part of that template. You might have synths and virtual instruments and audio channels all ready to go anyway. But that's you can. Um, work that one out for yourself um, for whatever you know the way you like to work um, get back to song okay um, so now I need to create tracks for all of these uh, groups to appear on so what I'll do is I've got the um, track add tracks assigned to a T key so I press the T key uh, now I've got uh, I'll call that machine I want seven more tracks because I've already got my group a, I want B to H, so I will uh, have seven. Have it the same colour as as A for now. Um, default input existing instrument. I want that selected because I want to use this same instrument as here, and then I want to just change this so that it um, to two. So the next track will be two because the ascending uh, is ticked. The track after that will be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way through, correspond to that so that your MIDI channels are corresponding to the ones that are set up in the pattern. I'm just going to highlight these, open them up. So 
I'll have to change this here to machine two, channel two, machine two, channel three, channel four, channel five, etc. I won't do all of them for now. So, but you can now when I'm I'm on uh, one and I'm on pattern A here. Play the pads. I've got MIDI activity and I can hear sound. If I go to uh, which is now group B, press B on the controller or click it here. Obviously the same sounds because I've got the same kit set up, but I could change those. Um, that's working there. Um, if I move to three and You'll see no, no activity now because I'm still on B there. I need to change that to C. Now I've got activity. Uh, number four is D, and that's working fine. Okay, um, but of course, still everything is coming through this one stereo channel here. Um, it kind of routes that automatically to the master, which is coming out of this. Now I can change that, I can just click on the instruments uh, tab here if you've got that open you can open and close that here if I just click once on that it brings down a drop down of all of the outputs so I'll just do the first four for now just to show you that it's creating these um, in the console view so now if I go to group A and play that's going to come out here obviously you're not hearing anything now because track four is still in record mode if I go to there now you're here if I now go to what is group B, um, move to B here. Now you'll notice there's nothing coming out of the console uh, channels here, even though I've created them here. Obviously, this doesn't assign the audio; this just creates the channel. So what I need to do now is go into my mixer which of course you can do uh, that from the input and output tab but the mix is quite a useful way to do this so what I'll do is group A drop down here external 1 group B external 2 3 and I just did 4 for now okay so now when I play group 1 I'm on A here on my hardware signal coming in there go to group B now this should and I'm, I'll uh, move this to B which is here now I'm going to get sound out of 2 when I move to C and move to that there I'm going to get sound here and D will be there for so that is really the setup and that's the way to do it if I um, I can just show you if I go to A here and now I can just click uh, record in fact I want to turn off the input monitoring so I don't get doubled uh, notes when I'm monitoring just start recording okay and play that back now if I double click on there close the plugin down bring up the editor you can see that the MIDI is all now on one track okay and just to show you uh, how great this is if I open you can open the plugin from any of these tracks as well which is great okay uh, group B now I'm just going to open up a, a 909 kit instead Okay, I'll go back to the, the, this view. So I've got 808 with all of the routing intact. In fact, now I can turn off any of this. Sorry, I'm no longer now needing to have all that highlighted. Uh, channel one, sound output, host, all of that stuff. Go to B. It's all it's all set. It's all ready because it's not changing anything because of this routing button. So um, that that because that's grayed out. That's the default setting now. Um, it won't change the routing when you change a kit. If you want to change the routing per kit, you have to press that. So I think it's a really great idea. It just stops you forgetting and getting confused. So um, group A is an 808 kit. Group B is a 909 now. So I'm I'm on. I'm going to label these because I keep forgetting. Group A, okay. Group B. Group C etc. So uh, group B is 909 so I'm going to go there, take off that monitoring thing you can hear that's a different kit sound right? Um, I'm just going to record there you go. I'll 
obviously what I'm playing is nonsense, but just for demonstration, I think that'll be okay. And then C, I could add another kit of any kind. Rooting stays the same. If I go to C now, you hear different sounds. So you can build up a whole um, project using eight kits, uh, eight different kits. You might just want to have one instrument per group, but you might want to have the full 16 on every single kit. You know, you could do that now. It's possible. Let's close the editor, close down the machine. Um, so what I'll just quickly do is uh, close this all down, not saving any of it because I've already got it set as a template. So if I go now to create new song, you can see this is the starting template. Uh, machine 8 groups stereo outputs, if I just click that this will now open a brand new song in Studio One as a machine uh, project and now you see what I've done I've also selected all of these groups right click and gone to pack folder which has then created a folder here and then I right click there uh, there is an option where is the option? I right click that before and it, it said um, create VCA which uh, VCA is like a volume control basically I just you know so you can you can just have a little bit of volume control there and um, you can open and close the folder to you know make space on your, on your desktop uh, but I've also colored these you see um, you know the same as the groups colors that appeared when I just opened up the, the groups um, earlier on they just added the same colors so you can you get a little bit of uh, consistency between them um, also I had to go into the console and color these and, and name them uh, as well uh, separately um, so I named group A to H there and had to go in and put group A to H but the whole thing works really well now so um, make sure I'm on group A okay I'm just I did record that group B change group B on the hardware um, record of course I keep forgetting to take off the input monitor um, group C on the hardware record and uh, there we are that's how it works so feel free to use the template that I provided I've um, added a Dropbox link um, wherever you're watching this uh, there should be a Dropbox link um, for the folder containing the video and, a, and an installation instructions and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I hope you find that useful. Okay, thanks. Take care. Bye.